Hey, hey, I'm here with Ivind. Hi, Ivind. Hello, Moritz. <laughs> I'm really excited uh, about your product because um, these are rocket engine pumps, right? Yes, that's right. These are um, pumps that we are developing uh, for a, a micro-launch vehicle. Uh, we are we are orbital machines, and we are um, developers of of standardized uh, propellant pumps for rocket engines. So our goal is to um, standardize as much as possible and to really reduce the time it takes to bring up a new rocket engine or, or even a new launch vehicle by supplying these these parts as a as a supplier to the industry. Cool. Um, I think probably the, the Electron is the first rocket that used uh, electrical um, powered pumps for a, a rocket yeah. engine that went to space. Yes. Um, what, what is the reason that this is possible now or why wasn't it possible before? Yeah, so the main reason is that there has been an immense um, development in electric motors and batteries in the last decade or two. So um, only now is it possible to make batteries that are light enough that you can fly to space with electric propellant pumps, basically. And yeah, Rocket Labs was the first one. And uh, since then, they have uh, increased their performance by using even newer technology. And now this year, Astra Space almost made it to orbit with their uh, uh, propellant pumps, also electric. So this is really the new thing. Um, and it's only going to become better and better. Now you have new uh, lithium sulfur, batteries on the horizon that are going to drastically reduce uh, the, the power density again, or increase the power density. So electric pumps are really uh, the new thing and they have come to stay. And we want to um, really make sure that, yeah, so, so right now you have all of these uh, companies doing stuff in space, doing launch vehicles, and they are all building their own stuff. And that costs a lot and takes a lot of time. So by providing these standardized parts, we are hoping to drastically reduce the time to market and the, uh, the cost of access to space, because that's what new space is about, right? We want to reduce the cost of flying in space and getting to space. You mentioned it, uh, energy density. Normally, in rocket engines, there are turbo pumps. So uh, you have, or you use the, the fuel that's for the rocket engine to drive your pumps. So um, you need a lot of energy. So these small pumps probably are really powerful, right? <laughs> yes, they are very powerful. So um, you can imagine the rocket, uh, you know, a rocket is basically, it's 98% propellant. You know, it's just gigantic tanks full of oxidizer and fuel. And all of that has to be pumped into a combustion chamber under high pressure in two minutes and burned. So you need an immensely powerful pump to do that. And that's why until now it has not been practical to do it with electricity and batteries. Um, but now the scale is tipping in favor of that. And is um, there a limitation because of the fuels? So or can you do like liquid oxygen? Can you do kerosene or... Um... Yeah. So, so we are trying to target the most used propellants because we want to be as standardized as possible. So we are targeting uh, for oxidizer, we are targeting LOX and hydrogen peroxide. There's a lot of hybrid engines needing hydrogen peroxide pumps and a lot of bipropellants needing, needing LOX pumps. And for fuel, we're targeting kerosene, uh, well, RP1 and um, methane. Um, yeah. Really cool. So um, it looks like uh, stainless steel, right? Uh, or is it uh, uh, This is aluminium alloy. Aluminium? Oh, okay. So these are, uh, that's the LOX pump, that's the RP1 pump. So actually the LOX pump will have some different materials. This is, uh, this, this one is intended for water testing. So we, this is not the materials that will be in the final LOX pump because um, LOX is highly reactive with aluminium, so it's not safe to just make everything out of aluminium there. Um, but yeah, for this one, it's a first version for, for water testing. And uh, technically, I mean, this looks like a little bit like um, uh, a propeller from a, from a ship, but this is probably not the, the pump itself. Um, there's probably a, yeah. a bigger... True. So this is a single stage pump. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a two stage pump, actually. Uh, Inside there are, um, yeah, so, so what you see here is the 
inlet, it's the inducer it's called. And the purpose of this part of the, of the, of the rotor is to very gently increase the pressure as it enters the pump. Um, and the reason for that is that if you have too much, okay, it's a bit complicated, but if, if you have too much suction here at the inlet, too much, too strong a suction, then the, um, the fluid will actually boil and that can cause damage to the pump. Ah, okay, I know that because uh, I'm a little bit uh, um, in love with ships. Uh, it's called cavitation, right? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, okay, and then after this inlet yeah. wheel, I call it, <laughs> uh, you have like a centrifugal pump, right? Exactly. Yeah, so there's a centrifugal impeller in here mm -hmm. and then there is this inducer at the, at the tip, which is intended to uh, avoid cavitation. And in this one, there is two centrifugal impellers because it's a two-stage pump. Okay, and... Um, is there a special size in rockets or rocket engines that you target or that you think that the market is going to yeah. win? So um, for now and probably for, for a while, uh, electric propellant pumps are heavier than uh, the traditional turbo pumps. So the, the energy density or the power density of a battery is uh, quite a bit lower than what you have in fuel. So um, these are Currently, we're kind of at the tipping point where electric pumps are suitable for small launch vehicles that send microsatellites and nanosatellites. Payloads less than a ton, basically, into orbit. That's when the, the benefits of electric pumps outweigh the, the drawback of the extra weight. Um, but as I said, there are battery technologies on the horizon that is, are drastically higher performance, higher power density, so that will uh, they will, they will make it into gradually bigger launch vehicles as we go. But they will not be in Elon Musk's Starship. That, that is still the... Uh, yeah, that is going to be... And you mentioned that you know you want to build a product that is um, yeah, a little bit like off the shelf for uh, the startups. So um, for them, um, a benefit is that they get a um, functioning pump and also probably their startup of their in engines. So the startup of the engine is easier probably with an electrical pump yeah. than of a turbo pump because you do not have to run the um, pre-burner, right? You can, you can control them extremely precisely during the whole flight. Um, uh, they are extremely responsive. So you can adjust your, your propellant mixture and you can adjust your thrust very, very uh, precisely. Um, They're very easy to start up. Uh, They're safer. Um, yeah, so it has a lot of benefits that are suitable for small launch vehicles that want to launch frequently with uh, as little as possible extra stuff around it and safely and yeah. And what is the customer um, or what, what will the customer buy? Is it just the pumps or will he get a package of pump, motor and battery or controller? Yeah. Or? So, um, we develop, uh, we produce the pump and the motor as one unit um, and controller. And uh, the battery we don't produce, but we are working on partnerships to be able to kind of um, resell the battery in a functioning configuration. This sounds really, really good with the, with the motor and the pump.